Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm sorry that this video has actually taken me a little bit of time to get out there. Uh, essentially, uh, because of the game yesterday, because uh, it was in London, uh, I had to get back home and I ended up getting home at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Didn't feel up to making a video then, so I've waited until the day after to, to make it and maybe seem a bit more awake uh, when I'm talking about the game and my experience. Um, rather than uh, look half asleep and probably not give very insightful comments on the match and the experience. Um, so uh, I want to quickly, well I say quickly, probably uh, rather in-depthly uh, thank everyone for uh, not necessarily the feedback on the last video but the the kind of attention it got and um, the, the, the kind of I don't know how to, how to say it properly, but like the anonymous responses to it, um, because uh, it seemed to be quite popular with Saints fans, quite a few likes, and I managed to somehow obtain like 22 more subscribers to the channel just from that one video alone. And I wanted to say big thank you to you guys, uh, because that's a real incentive for me to be doing this all season long uh, and commenting on pretty much every Saints game I can get my hands on. Uh, last season I actually didn't do any of the cup games, so uh, doing this one now, uh, I'm, I'm trying to test the water and see if people will interact with it the same as with Premier League games, because obviously cup can uh, have a connotation of, of not being as important. Uh, obviously it depends which cup competition you're in and what position in the cup competition you're currently playing at. Uh, but um, I think I'd love to see some more interaction with you guys, and I'd like to, to provide a good insight onto how I felt games went and how I felt uh, um, we played and the prospects of our season. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching the last video. Uh, a lot of people I'm, I'm sure will have clicked on it thinking it's going to be a highlights video. Uh, I don't want to be an idiot and I don't want to be using copyrighted content in these videos. Um, so uh, if that's what you think this channel is going to be, uh, that's not going to be the case. It's just going to be me talking uh, because, yeah, like I say, I don't want to be I don't want to be an idiot. I don't want to be taking footage from uh, from games, from broadcasters. I don't know. I don't own the rights to the footage, uh, things like that. So just trying to be sensible, just trying to be normal, good, honest young man, uh, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, at the same time, uh, whilst this was like a, a big day for me, it was my first ever Saints away game. Uh, it's been 21 years in the making. That's actually quite a long time. Um, I again, I didn't vlog. There's a lot of people who do match day vlogs, and I dabbled with it uh, in the last few seasons. I went to a few Saints games at St Mary's and uh, tried having a phone, uh, uh, trying to be as discreet as I could because I know that people look at it and find it annoying. Um, and it never really sat right with me. I didn't want to be watching the game constantly with my phone ready to record anything that might happen. It also didn't help that the majority of the games I went to didn't perform particularly well. Um, but I, I, since then, the, this kind of vlogging uh, norm at games, you see it all over the internet. People are like, oh, these fans, look at all of them have got their phones out when they should be celebrating. And, and realistically, yeah, I completely agree with that sentiment. I don't think that uh, people should be recording really at games, uh, particularly you see, uh, actually one of, my, my, one of my, my favorite things to do is when Saints win a game is watch the fan vlogs from the opposition's fans. They're, they're really good fun. That's the only reason I, I like that kind of video. And I think it's kind of disrespectful to your team. You should be paying your full attention to the team and not worrying about getting a few views on a video later on. And, and so for that reason, uh, uh, for this away game, even though I thought about it uh, and I thought about doing some stupid kind of, not filming the match, but filming uh, what happened before and after and the horrific journey I went through. I was thinking about filming that, but in the end, I think it's easier to just talk. Uh, so there's no there's no game footage. There's only that clip of, of Ralph at the end, which uh, my uncle took. So that very kind of him. So yeah, okay. Without further ado, I'm I'm not going to spend too much time on this video because again, it was a cup game. It wasn't a particularly exciting one. Um, one that we can take a lot of positives from. Um, but yeah, it was it was a cup game. It was a like, right right at the start of the cup. So I don't need to pay too much attention to it, I guess. Uh, but to be fair, we did have a relatively tough opponent because uh, a lot of teams had League 2 opponents 
and lost, <laughs> which is quite good fun seeing the other Premier League teams and how realistically yesterday wasn't a very good day for Premier League teams. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll go through my, actually what I ended up doing in the day because it wasn't just the match, it was the whole build-up and, and travelling to go to an away game, which I was, I was really keen to be part of. Uh, so um, Ollie, my older brother, he had the idea of going to this away game because he thought... I've always, he's, he's always wanted to go to Craven Cottage. I've always wanted to go to Craven Cottage. This would be a brilliant opportunity to get a cheap football ticket. Travelling to London from where we live isn't too expensive, isn't too difficult. Um, and we could, we could uh, just go and experience an away game together. And, and it was really, really good, really good idea. Um, and we ended up asking my dad and my dad's brother, our uncle, who, is, um, who are both huge Saints fans and have been, well, believe it or not, long before we were alive <laughs> so um we we tried to to organize it so that we could all do it and thankfully we were able to sort something out so uh ollie and i ended up getting a, a bunch of drinks it was really good fun uh traveling to london on the train uh playing stupid football quizzes the entire way uh naming like the top three goalkeeper like the the, the goalkeepers with the most appearances for each premier league team that's ever been that was quite good fun. We weren't very good at it. We managed to get two of the three Southampton ones. So realistically, that's not very good for a Saints fan. Um, but it was really, really good fun. We, um, we went to like we went out for food in London to Carluccio's. All very, very premium. This isn't really selling the match day experience video I, I wanted to do, but it all it all came together and made it really, really enjoyable to me. Uh, we took the tube over to uh, to Putney to go uh, to go to Craven Cottage. We ended up getting on the wrong uh, tube line, uh, so we had to go back on ourselves, <laughs> which was which was good fun. But uh, in the end, um, walking to Craven Cottage, right, is really nice. Uh, you walk through like this park, and you're right by the Thames, and it, it just feels really, really like really chill. And it's not the same as as walking into St Mary's. It's not the same as walking to any other. Um, stadiums I can remember uh, walking into and it, it felt really really interesting and it felt quiet and calm and serene the only thing that made it not feel that was the temperature because believe me yesterday was ridiculous in the UK recently we've had a number of small heat waves we did have a bigger one earlier in the year uh, and London is always the epicenter of that and there's always that's where the worst temperatures are so it was hot down here where we uh, started our journey and by the time we got to London it was later in the day but it got even hotter and it was ridiculous so uh, we thankfully all of us decided to wear t-shirts and shorts because uh, normally you'd go in scarf and hat and like the proper away day thing of having your your scarf and whatever sh throwing it around but no wouldn't have survived <laughs> but uh I can say that Craven Cottage was a very nice stadium. Uh, it's very small, really. It's like a 20-something capacity stadium. One of the like their main big stand with the, where the TV cameras normally are uh, was closed because they're refurbishing it or knocking it down and building a new one. I don't actually know the logistics of it, but it's a really nice-looking stadium. Um, like That's why I've always wanted to go there. I love that they've still got the cottage in the corner, uh, and it was, it was good fun. The... The fans for Fulham, no, they didn't create an atmosphere, so uh, that's that's uh, always nice. Uh, that's actually probably the best bit of the away day, uh, the away day um, atmosphere is that the away fans, I've never been in a crowd like it because everyone is screaming and shouting and singing and, and normally in home games, we're, I can't remember what stand we're normally sat in. Yeah, I, I, like I say, I'm not, not a huge... Uh, person for every single stat about every single football team's stadium and stuff but normally we're in the quieter areas of stands and it's never um, quite the same as what we experienced yesterday but um, it was nice and where we were sat it was all right um, for the first half couldn't really judge the depth of the pitch very well which was a shame because uh, I always like being on the side of the pitch so you kind of get a profile of both ends you can tell when there might be offsides and things like that so going lengthways is a bit different um, but second half was much better because you've got you can judge the depth a lot better and you can see the action and you can see the reactions of players' faces on your team, which is nice. Uh, but it was good fun. So uh, yeah, really really good uh, journey up. Atmosphere was building and building and building, and then the game started and nothing really happened. Uh, we <laughs> we nearly conceded right at the start. They had a free kick. Um, I don't know how they got their free kick really because Danso managed to recover really well and then kind of. He cut across their striker 
and then cut across too far and therefore had, had to foul him. And I thought it was a bit of a soft uh, yellow card, really, but I guess he, he was kind of the last man. Uh, but yeah, they hit the crossbar. McCarthy had to make a save soon after that. It was, it was very cagey, but realistically, that's the only thing that happened in that, uh, in that first half. It, was, it wasn't a very good one. And Saints didn't do anything. Fulham did more than we did uh, and really didn't do that much. So it was quite boring, actually. Uh, so real realistically, the most fun thing of that half was just being with the Saints fans and singing ridiculous songs. And uh, that, that was good. Like, I just, I just really liked uh, being able to come out of a game completely hoarse and shattered, like my body being knackered from jumping around and, and making a fool of myself. And yeah, that was nice. But uh, yeah, I wish we'd come into the first half with the same mentality that we've had coming into the second half of the Brighton game and coming into the second half of this game, where for some reason it seems to take us 45 minutes to realise that we should be putting a bit more of a press on the opposition. I don't know why it takes so long. I guess Ralph kind of trusts the players to to be that aggressive and then they never do it. <laughs> so half time he comes and yells at them and tells them to press. So maybe uh, maybe he just needs to stop trusting them as much and he needs to shout at them before they even get on the pitch, which like I wouldn't have a problem with. Obviously you don't want people shouting at people, but it, we need an aggressive. Uh, we need an aggressive forward line and... Uh, whilst we can do it really well, we haven't been doing it consistently over the entire game. So it'd be nice to see that in the first half against Man United this weekend. Uh, but yeah, second half comes and instantly big impacts uh, from our, our strikers. Um, Oberfemi had a terrible first half, I feel. Um, he couldn't get the ball under his control. I think there's a big difference between Oberfemi and... Um, Ings. Ings is happy to sit in midfield and, and let players play off of him, whereas Oberfemi likes being in the centre and he likes being up front. He likes making the runs and stuff. So um, I think realistically, Redmond and Jenepo are more uh, suited to play off of a player like Ings so they can make a run rather than make a run and try and put the ball in. They're much more likely to enjoy taking the chance themselves, having received the ball from someone else. So uh, Oberfemi, I'm not sure what his impact will actually be this season, but uh, anyway, he's, he played a lot better in the second half with the whole really, really high pressing game, uh, which was good. A lot of things happened in the second half. I'm not going to go through them all because you can read it. You can watch highlights uh, on YouTube and, and stuff, but uh, there are a few things I, I wanted to, to highlight. So first of all was that I don't know how they didn't get a red card, and this wasn't featured in the, uh, the highlights uh, because... Uh, I guess because nothing came of the free kick that we got from it, but there was, I think it was Genpo or Buffal were, was the last man, uh, last man on, on the pitch running towards the keeper and their, their defender slid in behind with no intent of the ball. Like he was completely behind the, the ball and behind the player uh, and slid in with the studs up and got him right, right in the heels, crashes to the ground. And he, he's the last man, clear goal, goal scoring opportunity, has no intent of playing the ball and takes him out. And when you see the Danso um, foul in the first half that got him a yellow card and then compare it to this other one, which you can't even see anywhere, uh, which is really annoying because I'd love to be able to put a clip in right now, even though what I said about copyrighted material. Um, I don't see how that can be uh, held to the same standard as the Danso foul because it was way, way worse. And last man fouls, especially if they're cynical, should in my opinion, always be a red card. Um, so it was it was quite tough to watch that one just because the referee, in my opinion, didn't have a fantastic game. He was all right. Uh, he seemed kind of trigger happy on the cards for Saints players. Uh, I don't know if that was just, it, that's just me being biased, but often I think that, um, well, I guess me being biased and often I think that referees are harsh uh, to Saints they probably go fit together quite well. That is definitely me being biased. Uh, but in this case, uh, I think that it was a red card was justified and we didn't get one. Uh, but uh, in, from the second half, what I can say is that Genpo is currently my favourite Southampton player. I love Redmond to pieces, um, but we used to how he plays. So it's nice to see someone else coming into the team and providing you with uh, like a shock uh, and a, a lift from someone new coming in and playing a fantastic level of football. Uh, and there was only one point in the match that I can remember where Jennifer lost the ball, 
every single time he was on attack, he was holding the ball up really well, doing his stupid step overs and, and driving defenders crazy. And I think he plays to the level that I want Buffal to play at, where he's being fast, he's being dynamic and, and creating uh, openings, but he's not trying to be too flamboyant. He's not showboating as much as uh, Buffal does. And that, therefore, he can keep the ball under his, under his spell a lot more and he can keep control of it. Buffal um, was doing his normal, doing lots of tricks. First half, he looked kind of out of his depth. He kept slipping over. don't know if he had the, the right boots on or anything, but um, second half, he came into it a lot, a lot better, stopped doing some tricks. Uh, but him and Jenepo, what I can say is they're both insanely talented attacking players, but Ralph has really driven in the mentality that they have to get back and defend. And we never saw that from Buffal before, but they're both, their defensive play, both of them are is fantastic. They're, they're using a lot of their energy, just tracking back to make sure that we can retain possession. And that's really good to see. And we saw it uh, against Brighton. Jenepo was really, really, really good just coming back to collect the ball. Uh, and defense, defensive work is, is fantastic. So well done, well done you two uh, for playing some good defensive play. But Genpo is definitely the most exciting player I've seen uh, like come into a, a Saints team brand new. Um, so uh, also I think Danso, apart from his yellow card, had a really, really good game. Two clean sheets when he's been playing uh, and I think he looks a lot more comfortable in a centre-back position because uh, he was playing left-back against Brighton and I, I commented about this in the other video, but he just seemed to be wanting to slow the game down all the time and just uh, to take things slow. And that's just the stereotypical centre back uh, like role. But he was playing on the left, and we're used to Bertrand being there and making dynamic runs and linking up with Redmond all the time. So it kind of slowed the game down a bit too much and wasn't really what we're looking for. So I think in centre back, he'll be a lot more useful and I really 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 hope that Ralph starts him against Man United because he looks very very solid um on the like I was talking talking about Redmond he got injured which is very worrying because it was it looked quite bad he, he I think he twisted an ankle or a knee uh whilst he took a shot uh, apparently someone saw a picture of him after the game uh, wearing like a brace either on a knee or an ankle I can't remember what it was and that's worrying because I, I think Redmond is probably our most charismatic player he starts pretty much every single game well I say pretty much every single game he has started every game for a long time uh, and I'm kind of worried because I don't know how we'd perform without him in the team uh, I'm guessing we could put Long in instead if we're going to keep playing a 4-2-2-2, but I don't think we're going to play that against Man United. Uh, you never know. But uh, yeah, it's a bit worrying. Uh, obviously, we want to see him as our, our kind of talisman. There's a really good chant that uh, the fans have for, for Redmond that I, I really enjoyed. And uh, I just hope he's okay because uh, he's a talent that we're, we're definitely going to miss, especially against the tough opponents. Um, so hopefully Redmond gets back relatively soon. Obafemi also got injured, uh, but I guess we're kind of used to that now. I think it was another hamstring injury. So I don't know if he just overstretches himself. He's not a very big player. He's very quick, but he's not big. So I think he really has to stretch himself to make the most of his pace. And I think that's a bit like damaging to him. Maybe he just overexerts himself. Uh, stretches a bit too far and damages his his uh, his hamstring and it, it's sad to see because he, I think he's talented he managed to get a good goal uh, in this game uh, Redmond did fantastically on the left uh, and pulled it across and it was really good to see him score because like I said I don't think he had a very good first half um, but it is worrying because he's he's a talented player I don't know how well he'd actually fit into the Premier League obviously he got a goal against Huddersfield last season but that was quite lucky it was, again, really good, really good play by Redmond um, and it was relatively easy finish for him. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see how this injury affects his place in the team. It would be quite nice to see him playing in the Prem, but I think that Danny Ings is r realistically more suited to uh, playing in the Premier League as a striker for Southampton. I think he's solid. He's happy to let players run off, run off of him rather than taking chances himself. And... Uh, whilst he does get injured a little bit, uh, I think that at the moment he's a lot less prone to it than Obafemi. So uh, I hope Obafemi's okay, uh, but he's not hes not anywhere near as big as a loss as Redmond would be if they're both out for some time. 
Uh, what else haven't I talked about from this game? This game, this video is a lot longer than the Premier League one, and I did not expect that. I'm sorry about that. Um, if you survived so far, uh, I'm very proud of you for watching this. It's 20 minutes. It's not not too great. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've probably said everything I need to say. Um, like like I, I, I told you, it took me a long time to get back home after the game. We were all really, really tired and happy. Um, so I, I can't imagine doing the away day experience and, uh, and losing a match. It must be really, really tough to travel home, especially if you're one of the people who goes to the, like the games very far away from where you live. So like it, for me, uh, going to like a Newcastle away game and then not winning or not drawing would be horrific. So I mean, just props to people who can do that, who can commit to doing that. Um, but yeah, we got home at like quarter to two. It was a very long day, like an almost 12 hours of like, since we started traveling to when we got back, but it was, it was worth it. And uh, I'm really, really happy that that was my first experience of an away game, uh, that it was in Fulham because I've always loved the stadium uh, and it was with my family. So it was, it was a good experience and hopefully I will go to a few more and maybe depending on what you guys want me to do, I can, I could do some kind of match day uh, video type thing where I've actually got my camera out. Uh, not filming the match, I, I really don't want to be doing that, but filming my, my build up, my, my thoughts on the team sheet, like as, as, the get, as the day goes on towards the match, I could do something like that. But then again, I'm, I'm like, I've just finished university. I don't have, I don't particularly have much money. So the number of away games I can actually afford uh, is definitely uh, not very many. So we'll see what happens anyway, because uh, I might get a job and then I can start affording things. Uh, yeah, currently unemployed. Come on, people, find me a football-related job, please. Uh, I really need it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here because it's way too long already. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed my stupid rambles. This is essentially what this channel is. It's just me getting a camera out and then talking. No cuts, no if, no buts, and, and I'm just going to see what spurts out of my mouth. And uh, I hope that you can tolerate how rambly these videos are. Uh, anyway, let me know in the comments down below because no one did in the last video. That's fine because like people seem to enjoy my content. Uh, but let me know what you guys thought of the game. Uh, also, give me suggestions on what kind of videos you want to do, uh, you want me to do next because I've been thinking about it. I love doing these Southampton videos, but I could I could do other games as well because I watch as many of the weekend like Premier League games as I can. Uh, so it might be interesting to see. Uh, like to, for me to do videos on like the other games that I watch or like one or two of them because, like especially like the big game of the weekend and I could do, give my thoughts on that kind of match because I, I like I say I watch pretty much all of the games I can so uh, that might be qu quite good fun uh, and um, if you guys would like that let me know uh, in the comments down below anyway if you like this uh, this video and the content and the, I don't know why you would uh, drop me a like just to let me know uh, what you guys thought of it um, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stupid rambly video and uh, until then I hope you have a lovely uh, week, uh, rest of your week until the Samton game on Saturday with the early kickoff so uh, I think my video on that game will come out pretty early on in the day which is nice uh, so until then yeah have a really nice uh, have a very nice rest of your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday morning, and I'll see you at some point on Saturday afternoon. Until then, take care and peace.